Portrait of the Arctic Ice at the end of the 2015 summer melt season, compiled with the aid of a computer model developed at APLUW's Polar Science Center at the University of Washington. Scientists report that the Arctic ice continues to decrease by all measures. The past September, this is when we reached the minimum in sea ice. We've seen the fourth lowest extent. And the fifth lowest in volume. Volume takes into account not only how much sea ice is, how much uh, it is spread out, uh, how, how far it extends, but it also takes into account the thickness of the ice. And with the volume, we're tracking how much sea ice there is overall. 2012 saw record minimums for both ice extent and ice volume. Then came a slight upward tick. Both in 2013 and uh, 2014, the ice uh, had come back somewhat and people had talked about a rebound or a recovery. That was both in volume and in thickness and in fact, beginning of this year still, or pretty much up until May, June, the ice was still pretty thick. But then this melt season was actually quite strong and a lot of ice melted during July. And so we wound up with a, a extend in volume that was pretty much on the long-term trend. That trend shows the minimum sea ice volume in 2015 is about 65% less than the minimum volume in 1979. About half of that is due to the loss in thickness, not just in extent. Historically, submarines and moorings were employed to spot check ice thickness. Today, satellites are tracking a dramatic decrease in mean ice thickness. We've only recently been able to start tracking the sea ice thickness from satellite. It gives us a complete picture. What we're doing now to track the thickness and volume loss is use a model. A model that takes the ice extend information from satellite and also takes sea surface temperature um, information from satellite, ingests that information, and then uses equations that track the melting and growth of ice as well as the motion of ice and how it is being ridged. Work is now underway to incorporate satellite ice thickness measurements into the UW Polar Science Center computer model, which should improve accuracy. I think we have to take into account that there are always going to be ups and downs. Like in 2012, there was an extreme. 2014, there was a bump back up, but the long-term trend is downward. I think so far we see nothing that tells us differently. Science at work for you. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.